Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We're going to continue on with this week's theme of vulnerable side, looking at music that is a bit more pensive and thoughtful, maybe a little bit more personal. Uh, I think the two songs we've had previously this week have kind of fit into it. I can see why they've been chosen, but they're not exactly what I was expecting, what I've been looking for for this week. And we're going to see if we can get that today. We have My Dying Brides for My Fallen Angel. Let's dig into this and see what they've got for us today. somber chord progression here.
dynamic element of movement versus standing still. We do see some linear lines in here, but a lot of this is very pattern based. Love including some of the melody love. lines even. At her should have fled. And not death's ebon dart. To strike her dead. Yeah, so there is no way I could have expected anything like that <laughs> popping up today. Um, yeah. Uh, all right, so let's let's dive into what is here. Uh, because there's, there's honestly not a lot, which is not a bad thing. I, I think they went for a minimalistic route and I think they did a fantastic job doing what they wanted to, uh, within that style. And from an artistic perspective, I think it mostly works. From a casual perspective, though, man, this bounced hard off of me, and I want to dive into both of these aspects as we move into this analysis. Uh, first, I do want to start off with kind of looking at it from more of a critical eye and, you know, examining more qualitatively what they're doing here. So we have an atmosphere that I think they nailed. It's somber, it's lethargic, it's uh it's pensive right there's a lot of melancholy here both uh, uh the sadness of the current event which the lyrics speak of holding a loved one in your arms uh specifically a loved one's corpse uh lifeless body in your hands and uh you know being sad about that that's not that's not a terribly uh a terribly great event. It's usually something that most people are, you know, dread ever having to do. Um, so I think the, the, the somber pensiveness that melancholy works very well. It introduces the sadness of the event into the atmosphere while simultaneously introducing this, uh, pensive thoughtfulness as well. It's not this, this overbearing sadness right? There's, there's, it's kind of this mixed emotion, this melancholy where there's definitely sorrow to it, but there's also this pensiveness, this looking back on, on times past quality to it. And I think it's a, a, a neat choice to go for. They could have really just gone in, uh, gone ham with that sorrow and made this a really sad piece. And instead they have that, that retrospective, introspective element to it that I, I think works very well especially given the lyrics, uh, or I should say the vocal delivery, which doesn't aim to go. It is theatric. I was going to say it doesn't go into the theatrics of, of sorrow and pain. It is still a very theatric delivery, but it doesn't try to hammer home that this is a depressing part of the narrative or, or whatever the song happens to be. It's a weird song on its own, right? I'm I I chuckled a bit in the middle and it's 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 just because I'm flung into this spoken word poetry over this uh very theatric music and not what I was thinking. I think this probably works very well within the context of the album. I'm kind of hoping that it were that it's sort of at least a conceptual album narratively and that this uh is sort of uh either finishes up the album or is placed between two uh, more proper, not proper, that's a weird thing, more traditional songs. On its own, though, this is, uh, 
it was a strange piece for me. Um, but yeah, so it doesn't really hammer home into this this sorrow, this depression. Um, it, it's it it kind of looks at uh, some of the pensiveness, and it's very cold about it. I think there is this. Uh, it's almost like uh, a score, the music, the strings. Uh, and the piano, it's it's very and yeah, it's it's very score like to me. It it reminds me not of music that is expressing somebody's internal feelings of holding a corpse, but the music that would be played in a film around somebody holding a corpse. Uh, and it's it kind of plays into that uh, theatrical element to it. And I think that's where some of the pensiveness comes from as well. And from that angle, the vocals I view more as a narrator than being the thoughts or words of the person holding this body. And it, it really changes my perspective on it. Um, and I think I'm kind of coming around to it a little bit more, looking at it from this perspective, more film-like rather than... Uh, what I originally assumed was more of a personal experience, the words of this person speaking out. And that kind of, like, like I said, it's cold, right? That's not the emotions I would expect the person to have. They should be sobbing and crying and really playing up the sorrow. And the music doesn't do that. The vocals don't do that. And I was trying to figure out, you know, where that link was between the lyrics and the delivery of everything. I think that's it. It's it's more like a narrator with a film score. Where you can picture what's happening in the scene. Uh, rather than the internal monologue of somebody who's in this position. And yeah, that, that's making me warm up to warm up to it a, a little bit more. Because uh, a lot of a lot of my criticism, why it bounced off of me, first of all, like I said, I think it's just it's out of context, right? It's missing a lot of context, and that's good. that's going to make it difficult for me to get into. But it is a very cold song, given the subject matter. Even the music seems to be uh, expressly picked to give the illusion of sorrow, without actually being sorrowful, without digging into that that sadness, that depression. Um, and you know I mentioned that, but it to me just listening to it casually, it's it's very strange to hear these these heavy words. And then of course, uh, we have to talk about that vocal delivery. It is a super deep voice. I think lower than I could even go. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not gonna try to do it on camera right now, but I I wonder if I could match. I I'll, I'll probably do it later, <laughs> and then I'll tell nobody about it. Um, yeah, super deep voice though, spoken word poetry, uh, the final stanza is a quote, and I don't know where it's from, I could probably look real quick if it's fairly common or fairly well known work of art, and of course that don't want to work right now. Everything's pointing back to, is this Edgar Allan Poe? Everything's pointing back to my dying bride on this line. Yeah, I uh, I guess I'd have to look that one up later, but I'm going to take a wild guess and say that it's, it's uh, something from Poe. I'm just all right. We're just gonna leave it at that. Anyways, it uh it it drastically changes the timbre and the vocabulary of everything that's been seen up to this point, and to me, I'm like I said within the context of the album, maybe it works well. To me, this whole song is hyper cheesy, and a lot of it comes down to the theatrics of it. It's overplayed, I think. 
And I'm not sure if that's the intention. I'm sure there's going to be fans that are like, no, nah, man, this is super serious. I can't believe you think this is cheesy. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm missing. I'm just listening to this out of the blue. So I have a completely different listening experience than people who have heard it uh, within the track. I mean, within, oh, so it's... Uh, it, it, so this is the final track to their 96 album, Like Gods of the Sun. So yeah, as, as a finishing track, you've gone through all of this uh, album. I think this would probably work in that context. But just by itself in a vacuum. <laughs> I hope you guys can forgive my, my few chuckles in the middle there. Just because it is, it's kind of absurd just how campy it is. And and I like camp. I'm I'm I feel like I'm laughing with it rather than at it. But again, I don't know what their intentions were. I, maybe it wasn't to be campy. In which case, it, it might feel like I'm poking fun at them. But I am missing that context. So please just bear with me on that. Now I do want to dig into the song structure a little bit before we wrap this up, because there's this really interesting concept here of momentum versus stagnation. The chord progression in this track is highly static. Either most of it takes place within the same four bar phrase or the entire song does. There's a couple of sections that feel like they might do a couple, uh, a little bit of modulation in it, maybe uh, changing one chord around within the progression. But that also just could be the way that the melody is playing off of it, uh, changing the way that it sounds. But I would, I would wager that a good 75% of this is the same uh, chord progression and m most likely the whole song is a single progression. So we have this this reliance on a single vamp that the entire song takes place over. What's interesting though is that we have this back and forth between the vocals and this lead uh, violin. Now the lead violin is interesting because it also cycles between ideas. It has two or three different melodic lines that are completely, uh, completely linear on their own. And I actually thought we were going to see a slew of these uh, linear string melodies. And it was around the, it might have been the third or the fourth time that the violin came in to take the lead between these, uh, these vocal stanzas that I was like, hey, wait a second. We heard this idea already. And maybe there were some slight variations to it. I, I didn't pick up on any. But for the most part, it was either inspired by or a direct copy of the first violin, uh, the idea that the, the violin used the first time they came in. So we have this concept uh, of this linear journey, but within it, there's also pockets of, of repetition, of loops. And also on a larger scale, we have this idea of this larger concept of loops where we're looping progressions of linear concepts. Uh, and I don't know if this has anything to tie into anything. This could just be the way that they went about doing this. Maybe they wrote three string lines and they tried to write a fourth and the fourth one just didn't come together. So like, we'll just start reusing them. And you know, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, I would be lying if I've ever said that I hit a roadblock and, uh, I didn't just start reusing old ideas. That is just a part of, of composing. That is part of the composer's toolkit. You can reuse ideas. You can make small variations on, on, on old ideas. Um, Stephen Sondheim is huge on motifs, taking a single concept and stretching it out through an entire musical, even if that single concept is four notes. <laughs> Sweeney Todd has four notes that are show, showcased throughout the entire musical. It's, it's fantastic the way that he takes this one idea and <laughs> puts it everywhere. Uh, so reusing ideas is not a bad thing at all. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, we, we have these macro 
repetitions. We have these micro repetitions. And then, of course, we have the constant repetition of uh, that four chord progression. So it's interesting to see these different layers of looping going on within this song. And even in moments where it feels like we're making progress, we're moving forward, we've hit linear moments, it just depends on how close you are. If you look at that section in a vacuum, you're like, oh, you know, we have movement, we have progression, we're moving through this song. But you move out a little bit, you look at the bigger picture, and you're like, oh, we've been here before. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, I don't know if those themes are relevant to the album, and they're just being presented musically in this final song or not. But I, I do think it's really interesting to see these multiple layers of looping. Um, and I think the final thing I want to talk about, it's just going to be a, a little one-off preferential thing, is the, the chordal, orchestral, maybe not orchestral, more of like a, a string quartet uh, that's providing the, the sound floor. It's those really wide chordal... Uh, they all have this really wide fade in on them and it makes shifting between them feel very stuttery and I just, I don't like it. You know, uh, 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 and the faster that we change notes, the, the shorter that the note is, these long whole notes, it really doesn't bother me that much, uh, especially when we have tied whole notes. But there are a couple of times where they moved a little faster through these chord progressions, had little micro progressions, little steps in between, uh, and we would have maybe half notes or quarter notes. Ba wa wa, and you get these wa wa, you get these wahs at the start of all of them, and man, it uh, it just feels very unnatural. There are you can definitely make an orchestra do that, but uh, to me at least, having it be present like that perfectly like that tells me that this is uh, a virtual instrument and it's just it never sounds good to me it really doesn't it has an unnatural aspect to it and maybe that's what they were aiming for once again intention I think is key if they wanted it to sound unnatural I think they did a fantastic job at that uh, but I don't get that feeling I, I really think that this song is supposed to be played straight it's supposed to have uh, you know, it's supposed to be serious, it's supposed to be dramatic, it's supposed to have weight to it. And there's just so many little elements to it. The vocal delivery um, and uh, the timbres of the sounds and the, the production that's on them, that just, it pulls me out. It gets to feeling so campy and almost like a parody of what I think it's trying to do seriously. But as usual, those are just my thoughts. This is for you guys. Come in, hit me up in the comments. Let me know if you enjoyed this one or not. Let me know if you agree or disagree with me. When you're done commenting, you can head up to the description box. In there is a link for Linktree. It'll take you to this menu right here. You can join the Patreon and vote on future themes and songs. You can submit a special selection. You can follow me on Twitter. You can join the Discord community and chat with other music fans. All sorts of stuff in there. Uh, there's merch in there as well. Just go through it. There's lots of cool stuff. Above the description box, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. We have one more video coming out in about six minutes. It'll be our special selection for the, for the day. I'm very excited about it. We have done a bit of exploration of Converge lately. I know a lot of people were hyped and excited that we checked out, uh, what was that song last week? Oh, Jane Doe. Uh, and I got a lot of hey, you should check out these other songs by Converge. And we're going to do some more Converge later today, but I'm super excited because I think this is the one that features Chelsea Wolfe. It's their new single or whatever. I'm super stoked for it. So if that's if that's got your interest, stick around. Like I said, now it's, now it's five and a half minutes away. <laughs> if I just keep rambling, by the time you finish this video, it will be available. <laughs> Anyways... Remember to be critical but not cynical of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.